Hey there, YouTube. It's Aisha. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. We are here to do my book review for Dark Illusions by Christine Feehan. This is a paranormal romance, and I am here to share about book 29 in the Carpathian series. Normally, I would say you need you don't need to read the books in order, but to really get the overall story of this series, you do kind of need to read them in order. There are 29 books. <laughs> Not quite sure you can jump in in the middle and get the full scope of the story. Even though she gives you little snippets to kind of explain all the things, you don't get the fullness and the richness of the story if you don't read them in order. So this is book 29 in the Carpathian series, and we're deeper into this world. The plot to destroy the Carpathian people is being exposed, and now we are beginning to see the different players that are in there. So just a brief snippet for those who have never heard of the series. Basically, Carpathians are from the Carpathian Mountains in Europe, and they are part of um, this world where lichens, werewolves, um, jaguar shifters, cat shifters, and mages, otherwise known as witches, exist. And the Carpathians are what leads to what we now know as vampires. But in this world, Carpathians are the good version. So like your Damon, <laughs> if you've ever watched Vampire Diaries, or Klaus, Klaus. And then when Klaus goes bad, that's vampires. Batshit crazy, power hungry, desperately needing to feel like they're in charge, destroying the world to do so. Yeah, that's Klaus, and that's vampires. So Carpathians are the race of nations that leads to vampires. And the way that happens is when a Carpathian is born, their soul is split into two. One goes into a woman. The lighter part of the soul goes into the woman. And the darker part of the soul goes into the man. The man has the capabilities to go hunting. Um, there are some that are built to hunt and protect the world from Carpathians who give up their souls to become vampires. Now to become a vampire is to give up your soul, to no longer want to be with your soulmate, to no longer um, want to wait for your soulmate. So you give into the power and the whisper of the demon and become the darkest thing out there. When you first begin the stories, the vampires are really weak. They're really stupid. They're really dumb. But as the stories progress, she clearly heard our critiques <laughs> and the vampires have gotten brutal and vicious and deeply cunning. And the plot, as they say, has thickened. So we are now in the world where um, we now know all the different tribes have been set upon by the vampires. This plot is going deeper than anyone thought. The betrayal is even worse than they thought. Um, strong family members that used to, families that were held up and considered um, epitome of Carpathian Nation, of the mages, of the lichens, of the werewolves, of the jaguars, have all fallen under the spell of world domination. They're all falling under this guise and this belief that they're superior and therefore they need to be in charge of everybody else. So in this story, we get the story of Julita, who is a mage who has discovered that her family has betrayed the Carpathian people way worse than the Carpathian people even know. So she goes to go warn the prince and on the journey to warn the prince, discovers someone finding the darkest book out there. It is a mage book held by the worst of the worst. And instead of going to warn the, the king, she decides to follow the person stealing the book and see if she can get it back or destroy the book. And this is a book that is built so it does not destroy itself or it cannot be destroyed easily. Seven, uh, no, five people have been sacrificed so that this book can be, you know, as deadly as it is. And one from each of the different tribes, humans, Carpathians, werewolf, humans, Carpathians, werewolf, <laughs> the Jaguar shifter and a mage have all died. So this book could be as deadly as it is. So she is not about to let that book just wander out into the world and do its damage. Because if it falls into the wrong hands, it's going to make the battle less even. That's going to be brutal, even worse. The king happens to notice the book is missing, and they happen to notice 
her magical signature. So they think she's still in the book. So she's been set out as the person to go after. And then someone else has been set out to go after her as well. And his name is I say, I believe that's how you say it. I'll put it across here. So basically, he's on the hunt for the book. She's on the hunt for the book. She's following the signature of the person who stole the book. He's following her signature and the signature of the person who stole the book. And it's a race to see who will find the book before the evil forces do. Because the book is very much like book from Hocus Pocus, where it's letting all the evil forces know, hey, ladies, I'm out here. Come get me. Um, <laughs> and this is them discovering that they happen to be soulmates. Her job is to reunite her soul with him and keep him from becoming vampire. And he has to figure out what it is that makes her happy and what he needs to do to make her happy. I love the book. I gave it four stars. I did not give it more than that for several reasons. One of the reasons I absolutely loved it is this is she's been writing more modern men recently and I love it. I say after Dark Predator, she's changed the way she's written the men. Um, before the men were super alpha males that sometimes you wanted to shoot them in the face. Um, but these men that she's been writing are men that understand that the women they are marrying and the women they are falling in love with have had lives of their own, have dreams and goals of their own, and that the men need to bend to that. They've always been like that, but it's always been um, their their domination and their beliefs over whatever the women believed. And even though the women have always been strong, they've acquiesced because, you know, <laughs> we're at war and uh, he's stronger. So uh, put him out in front. Um, <laughs> but now these women are coming up. They are warriors. They are the strong mages. They are the strong witches. And they at times needed to be out in front. So I really loved the book for that. I love the progression of the characters and how they learn to fit together. I thought it was a wonderful story for that. It is a great story addition to the books, to the story, and it progressed the overall story of the war, of the book, of what's going to happen, of who the players are, who the people that are hidden are, because we know all the, the masters who are pulling the strings to lead to this war have not been fully revealed. And we're getting some of the story, but not all of the story. And it makes it even more twisted to realize that, you know, um, there's so many more players that are hidden than there are out in the open. So you know the mystery is going to continue. Um, we get the, the preview of who the next couple will be. Um, and I want to see how that story is handled as well, uh, because the woman has been, ki she's been kidnapped for centuries to the point where she no longer remembers her family or who she herself was. Now I want to see, like, sh she knows who her soulmate is. She knows as a, as a Carpathian woman, it's her duty to m marry this man and save his soul. But how does she balance that with her need to find herself and become who she is again? So this story also had that because she had, um, we had the, dis the, the discussion of what prison is really like, whether or not you have the bars, a gilded cage is still a cage, um, and what family and people will do for power and just how far you will go just to feel wanted, needed, and loved. And her sense of guilt in not being able to know the difference between true love and the illusion that she was given. The reason I took one star off of here is there is a discussion of sexual assault in here but it's never called what it truly is. It is briefly discussed once as what it truly is. And then after that, it's mentioned as sex. It's not sex. If coercion, if it's drugs, or if it's a spell that is used to, and she says it like she didn't want any of what happened to her, but her body was coerced into doing it through this spell. Um, but yet she still called it sex. And I think that was a way 
for her to separate herself from it, but not see it for how truly bad it was because he recognized it and he was furious on her behalf um, for just how deeply effed up the situation was, um, particularly because there's still moments where she doesn't realize just how deep the intrigue of keeping her down was. Um, so yeah, this story was really good. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was done well. Um, I just could not give it that full five stars. One, because I didn't cry. Again, I've stated before that for me to give it five stars, I have to bawl. Like, I have to cry. I have to be sobbing. It has to be ugly. And, um, you know, it's got to hit you in the feels. It did hit me in the feels a couple of times where, you know, she expressed all these emotions and you're like, damn, I know how that feels. Or, you know, I can empathize. I understand. I know that, that sucks. Um, but again, it's, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't cry reading this one. There've been ones that I have sobbed reading them. Okay. <laughs> so for book 29, I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. I love the story. I love the fact that the male characters now are more modern, despite the fact that they're, they're claiming to be older. They are far better than some of the men that were written before, um, and I'm glad she's going back to that, like, um, idea of making the men, they don't have to be damaged just because they're, they're old and they've been waiting around for their soulmate. Um, yes, damage comes with that, but they don't have to be really, really bad. Um, and I'm glad she's gotten out of the, the need to be like Christian Grey with fangs, like, <laughs> or would that be Edward Cullen? Um, oh, and that brings me to the thing that makes me laugh every time I read these. One of the major things that I love about this is despite the fact that there's so much um, strife and the women go through so much in the story, a lot of the times when you read a lot of stories and they are fated to be together, a good chunk of the time the woman is a virgin and she is brand new to all of this. In these stories... The guys are virgins. She doesn't out and out say it, but she points out in each and every story that they don't have the ability to feel emotions, so they don't have the ability to feel desire, sexual or otherwise. So they can't practice with any other woman or any other man. They feel no desire to do so, and they instead um, study up in preparation of when they end up with their mate. So yes, the men, sexy and as hot as they are, are all virgins. I like that. <laughs> it's a nice little twist. Um, yes. And, you know, it's, it's not, she doesn't hold it up as a purity myth thing. It's just a thing that's in there. And it's not made a big deal. It's just something the guys think about, you know, Oh, while I was living in the monastery for the last 1,200 years, I studied all the books about all the techniques in preparation for the day when I meet my, my soulmate and I need to be the perfect mate for her. And uh, yeah, I will point out that because this story is, these stories are about a dying group of people, the stories are tend to be heteronormative because they're trying to rebuild their society. Take that as you will. Um, if you're looking for vampires that do have some gayness in there, you definitely want to check out Lowell K. Hamilton. I cannot vouch for anything beyond the Harlequin. If you want to read the Anita Blake series up to the Harlequin, I can say the stories were good. I can't say anything after that because I have not read past Harlequin. Um, I think I read Micah. I think Micah is Micah after Harlequin. I think so. And that was the last time I read. Um, well, Micah was about the, the leopards. Um, and I believe J.R. Ward's series, the Black da Dagger Brotherhood. Don't quote me because I might be wrong, but I believe one of her major characters in there is gay as well. And he's a vampire. So you can check that one out. 
Um, those I can say are out there, but you're not going to find it in this series. It's a heteronormative series. It is predominantly um, white love interests. There are a few interracial, um, I mean, it's interspecies. There's tons of that. <laughs> But there are a few interracial relationships. There are two um, or three black characters that I can think of. And there's a few Spanish characters in there um, or Hispanic or a Latinx characters, um, if you want to say. Um, but this is not this is not a series where, you know, um, the actual race of the characters matter beyond them being Carpathian, Lycan. Um, werewolves, you know, mages, those matter more than the actual um, description of who they are. Um, there are a few characters that they are clearly written as black characters. There are two that I can think of particularly, but that's the series. If you want to look into it, I think it's a fantastic series. I definitely always buy both the physical and the ebook because I am addicted to reading these and I tend to read them really quickly. This came out on Tuesday. Today is Thursday and I finished it yesterday. Okay. <laughs> That's how much I need. And her books are not, not light. So the story itself runs for The story itself runs for 372 pages, and then there's 30 pages of appendix in the back. There is a map of the Carpathian world, um, a discussion of the Carpathian healing chants, how their magic works, about who they are, and a breakdown of the different tribes and people. And then there's a pronunciation guide in the back as well. She started to put those in around book 19. Um, and I swear each time you buy a book, it's like three or four more pages of her. She's doing deep research on this. All right. So I do highly recommend it if you're looking for a paranormal series, if you're looking for a really good um, paranormal mystery with um, a lot of intrigue in there. This one, I definitely have to say now, I am not a person who despises sex in books. I absolutely love sex in books. This one is perhaps one of her tamest ones. And that is with the consideration that she has five pages describing the female character giving in. I'm a fan of a good blowjob, but I don't need that much description ever. <laughs> ever. Like, I get it. I know how it works. You've described this four times now. Um, but yes, this is perhaps the tamest one. Um, generally, there's sex right from the beginning, right to the very, bru you know, the very end. But um, this one, the good balance between the love story and the mystery, the overarching story, was very well done here. I'm definitely loving it. Um, and that's also improved the more the books have grown. Um, so, yeah, she's settling into a rhythm here. Definitely recommend it. If you're looking for paranormal stories, I definitely recommend Christine Feehan. She is certainly prolific. She has like seven series. I'm reading two of them that I'm completely caught up on, and I have five more that I'm trying to catch up on. This entire shelf right here is her. Okay. <laughs> I need y'all to take a break. Between her and Brenda Jackson, I'm never going to catch up. Um, <laughs> take a break. Go on vacation. Go somewhere. So I can catch up. But um, yes, this is Dark Illusion. This I enjoyed. Leave it in the comments if you've read this or are planning to read this. If you've read any of the series, did you like the series? What did you think about it? Um, did this intrigue you? Do you want to check it out? Let me know your thoughts and opinions. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.